How's it going everyone? Paul with Adaptable Survival. What I want to do in today's episode is go through the contents of my multi-operational fanny pack from the Wolves Den. Let's dive into it. So we are taking a look at the multi-operational fanny pack from the Wolves Den. Now, a little bit about the Wolves Den. It is a small time uh, business run by an active duty Marine. Uh, I actually came across this on Instagram a few months ago. Uh, follow a couple of different uh, active duty Marines and one of them posted about this and I kind of started looking at it and really, really got interested by some of the features that are within this. Also, I get to support a small business in the process. I picked one of these up back in November and have been using it ever since. Now I have this loaded out as, you know, if you want to think of it as a trauma kit, a bleed out kit, you know, whatever name you want to give it, it's just necessary items to address any sort of heavy bleeding or severe bleeding incident that may happen since I typically carry and also use sharp blades on a regular basis. And like the name entails, this is just a fanny pack, has an adjustable strap here where you can wear this crossbody around your waist however you want to wear that then you have one main zipper compartment which we'll dive into here in a second and a zipper pocket on the front on the bottom you do have up some bungee straps and as you can see here i just have my tourniquet put across there um, in the process of messing around with this loadout so few things aren't in here that I would typically carry, uh, but I wanted to get something put together so we can kind of discuss not only the fanny pack, but the importance of medical training and medical gear. And so general. let's run through some of the contents. As I said, I already have that Cat 7 tourniquet on the outside that's readily available if I need it. This front pocket, I just keep a lot of small miscellaneous items. You know, as you can see here, Excedrin, Advil, I uh, have some alcohol pads in here, some uh, Micropure uh, water tablets. Uh, this is just an ultralight signal panel. I'll be doing a video on that shortly. And then I have some drip drops just because I like to have electrolytes with me year round. And then the only other thing in this front pocket that I have is just a small titanium whistle. Uh, this is the Vargo titanium whistle just because it's so compact. And as we can see, one of the main features in here is you have a bright orange material on the inside here so we can kind of see what's going on. Uh, when we get into the main compartment, I'll talk about this bright fabric again. So let's dive into the main compartment here. And now when you open this up here, I have a few different items in here. I like to just keep some cheap gauze with me because I can use this to make improvised band-aids uh, with Gorilla Tape or Luco Tape, uh, which is something I got to put back into this kit since I took it out. Uh, there goes my gloves, but I just carry two of these S-Roll North American Rescue gauzes. Uh, these are what I'm going to be packing any kind of wound with. Uh, I like to carry these just because they're nice and compact. And then I do have a pair of non-latex gloves. I kept them in the box, um, but I could probably easily take those out of there. Uh, set this off to the side here. Then I have a quick clot uh, clotting sponge. I believe this one is expired, so I do have to buy a couple of new one, new quick clot um, packages but I like to keep these just because you know you can stuff these in to a wound and see if that's enough to kind of get that bleeding to stop and if that's not quite working you can either pull that out or start stuffing in that s roll gauze like I've said in previous videos I'm not trying to give you medical advice I'm basing this off of training I've done through from medical professionals uh, so We'll talk more about that in a second here. And then I just carry, uh, I believe this is a six inch uh, Israeli bandage. So as you can see, 
nothing too crazy, not a whole ton of stuff that I'm not really gonna use. This is all for addressing any sort of heavy bleeding. Uh, on the inside here, let me position this so you can see down in there, hopefully. But you can see two tabs down at the bottom here. Those are so you can adjust the bungees on the outside so you can get that tourniquet or whatever you choose to put on the outside here nice and snug to the bottom. But as I'm sure you can see on the inside here, that high vis pink material there. Now, where this can come in handy is now I have a built-in signal panel here. I have that one in the main pocket, but I can have an additional one here if something happens where, you know, I need two signal panels. I like to have multiple options. As I've talked about in other videos, the more options you can have, the more resources you have available with you. And then the last thing on the inside is you do have some hook and loop here so you can attach any kind of velcro pouches if you're setting this more so up as like an edc pouch or something like that uh, i really really like the functionality of this fanny pack uh, over the last year or so i've started seeing the usefulness of fanny packs so that's just kind of a look through the multi operational fanny pack um, kind of how i have it loaded out now, with this video, it's not meant to say, hey, go out and buy this, but I wanted to highlight a product from a small business owner, an active duty Marine, so that thing can get more well known, get some more traffic to the great stuff that they're doing. Now, the caveat with this video, I always preach this. If you've ever been a student of mine, if you've talked to me online or in person, I always tell people, seek out qualified medical training. I've taken Stop the Bleed, I've taken Wilderness First Aid, I've taken uh, First Aid and CPR. You know, go to credible sources for that training so that you can be more prepared to address any sort of issue you may come across if that's out in the woods or if that's in everyday life around town. Medical gear, in my opinion, is not something you want to ever improvise. Can you improvise some things? Definitely. You know, there is a time and place where that is applicable, but I'm always gonna make sure that I always carry the right stuff, always. Because I don't wanna bank my life or someone else's life on improvisation. You know, that's just setting yourself up for failure. As I talked about in uh, my debunking the survival myths uh, video a couple weeks ago, I've read studies on improvised tourniquets in particular that the success rate is right around 15%. I mean, that's a drastic difference compared to the effectiveness of a Cat 7. And I can't remember it off the top of my head, but it's significantly higher than 15%. So, like I said, can improvised things medicine work? Of course it can. You know, you just look throughout history and you can see situations where that does work. But for me, as someone who likes to keep, be prepared for the situations I may come across out on the trail or in daily life, I'm not going to bank on that as my resource. I'm going to make sure that I have the right kit, the right tool for the job, so I'm not banking on improvising to save my life or someone else's life. I will throw a link down to the Wolf's Den site so you can check out uh, the fanny pack as well as some of the other stuff that they sell. Um, I was just talking with him uh, today and he did let me know that uh, right now he's kind of uh, working out something with the manufacturer to get more of these in stock. So uh, as the recording of this video at the beginning of February 2023, uh, these aren't in stock, um, but I'm sure he will have something figured out fairly soon so you can keep these on your radar. In the comment section down below, let me know what places you've gone to for medical training. Uh, that's one of my goals for this upcoming year is to get out and further advance my own medical training. Uh, I plan on taking a woofer class, a wilderness first responder uh, class later this year. So I'd love to see where you have gone for medical training. And let me know what kind of medical kits you are using. Uh, like I said, I will definitely always go towards qualified professionals for my training. 
and my gear recommendations on what to carry. Uh, I'm not a medical professional, so take what I say as a starting point or a small piece in the bigger puzzle and kind of fit that in there. Do me a favor, hit the like and subscribe button down below that gets more eyes on the channel. The community that we're building here helps bring those people in so we can grow our knowledge base and learn together and grow together. As always, this has been Paul with Adaptable Survival. Adapt your mind, your body, and your gear.